Thank you, Barry. Ladies and gentlemen, and with acknowledgement to the marvellous traditional owners of the land. My contribution is, is entitled 10 Tenets for a Superb Outcome. This is the largest development ever contemplated in Sydney. It covers an area much bigger than our entire rocks. It dwarfs the celebrated or reviled toaster in Circular Quay. If we're to find common ground on what really is the best for Sydney, we need to go back to first principles and work out how to assess the ever-shifting proposals which are being unveiled. Here are 10 tenets against which we might judge the present model and the various future versions, which no doubt are in waiting. How would you score the current proposal against these 10 tenets? Tenet number one, plan for future generations. Think 100 years ahead or more. Urgent decisions are not good decisions. Great urban places develop incrementally over much time. Our own rocks area, the Campo in Siena and the great medieval towns. Tenet number two, develop a strategic plan to be refined and implemented by many contributors. A wide range of public and private development agencies should be involved in realising the plan in numerous stages over time. Not one single major commercial developer with immense power. Tenet number three, plan for the public good, not short-term financial gain. I hope that's added on to my time. <laughs> the, the best urban environment will result in the best economic outcome for the whole city and community. Immediate financial gain and X hundred thousand square metres of floor area, more or less, should be irrelevant. No, tenant number four, the democratic process produces the most welcoming and attractive environments. So we must encourage maximum community involvement, ensure the process is open, accessible, transparent, is an unaccountable authority democratic. Tenant number five, conserve the full waterfront for potential future shipping needs. There are a lot of experts who'd argue that peak oil has already probably passed. Oil reserves declining rapidly. In that situation, the cost and feasibility of air travel is likely to become prohibitive. All available deep water frontages may well be needed for passenger ships and freighters, as well as cruise ships and ferries. Short decided decisions in the Snow Harbour have already alienated other deep water frontages. Think of Woolloomooloo. Think of Walsh Bay. The full deep water frontage must be accessible for shipping when needed, without cost to the community, without needing to reclaim rights for public land at great cost. Tenant number six, reserve the full waterfront for public access and enjoyment, create a vital, safe public domain which is not overwhelmed by commercial development, pleasant scale, safe and vital. Number seven, ensure that the built form is sympathetic to its context, to the harbour and to the land. The size and scale of any buildings near the waterfront should complement existing development, be a pleasant human scale, enhance the city, cause no adverse impacts, overshadowing wind, visual bulk, view impact, etc. And again, learn from our own good examples. What about the rocks? Any high building should be set well back from the waterfront and relate to the scale of the existing high-rise development behind in the city. Tenant number eight, conserve critical views from the city. Those precious views from Observatory Hill, a beautiful vantage point for tourists and our own citizens must not be compromised. Views to the harbour for people in the streets should be retained. Views from existing residential and commercial buildings shouldn't be unreasonably compromised. Tenant number nine, recognise and conserve our heritage the land form, the built form, Aboriginal heritage, respect and the expert advice of the National Trust. Tenant number 10, the built form of our city symbolises our values. Ensure that development reflects the higher values of our society. Posterity will judge us, our values and our aspirations by the environment we create. The more prominent buildings should represent the best of our cultural, civic, spiritual values and aspirations. 
ensure that assertive building forms are not monuments to commerce, but relate to communal, educational, artistic or similar purposes, recognise and celebrate Aboriginal culture beyond the tokenism of the name Barangaroo. So using these principles or tenets, overall, how would you score the latest proposal? I, well, I have some difficulty rating it more than five out of 10.